Hey guys, and welcome back to more Reddit stories about entitled people, crazy people, and everything in between. So let's begin. Entitled mother refuses to move when I tell her to, then freaks when I write her a ticket. I work at an airport. Federal regulations prohibit vehicles parking next to the terminals. My job is to tell people this and have them take a loop around, or go wait in a park and wait area. Most people understand and drive off. We get drivers coming to pick up their people in waves due to multiple flights landing around the same time. Drivers will then pull up to the nearest open curb and park. What we do is break the stretch up section by section and start from the area closest to the exit and work our way down. I had just finished telling a vehicle to take a loop when Entitled Mother comes speeding down the road and wedges her way into the slot I just made. When this happens, we don't say or do anything because often their person is on the sidewalk ready to go. I'll finish talking to the cars that have been there a minute and then come back. When I go back to her, I give her the same phrasing as everyone else. Hi, unfortunately, there's no parking and waiting. Active loading only. If your party is not out here, you're going to have to take a loop around, alright? Oh no, my son is coming out right now, said the entitled mom. Okay ma'am, I can give you another minute, but if he's not out by the time I start walking back to you, you'll have to leave. I then stroll off before she can say anything. Usually when I say that line, people try to argue and ask for more time or get angry. So to prevent that, walking away is the best option. I finish the section again and head back. Now doing a section usually takes about 5 minutes, so she's had plenty of time. I tap on her window to get her attention and say, Still no luck? No, he's coming soon, she said. Unfortunately ma'am, you'll have to go around at this time. Just get into the leftmost lane and you'll see a sign that says return to terminal. Only a 4 minute drive. I'm not going. He's so close to coming out. Ma'am, if you're still here when I come back, you're getting a ticket. Hearing this, her inside Karen awoke. You have no right to threaten me in such a way. I am a tax-paying citizen, so my money paid for this airport. I can wait as long as I want. I don't argue with people, but I did notice the section was full again, so I just walked away. Finish it again in another five minutes. She's still there. At this point, I pull out my ticket book as I am walking to her vehicle. Everyone on the sidewalk is smirking and giggling a little. They are enjoying the drama. I walk right past her window and stand in front of her car and start writing her plates. What do you think you're doing? You have no authority, you're not even a police officer, she said. This is true, I am not police. However, I am airport operations. I have to enforce airport safety and protocol. When acting on behalf of my job, what I say is just the same as if it were from a cop. Ma'am, I have told you several times you'd have to take a loop around. Plus, you've had over 15 minutes to wait. She continues to yell at me, trying to create a scene and make me nervous to stop writing the ticket. It's also policy to not hand the person the ticket. We are to put it under the windshield wiper. I do just that. However, just before I do, I get a feeling to call control. Not ATC, but airport control. And request a camera be out on me. Just for safety. Now you're trying to break my property? I want to talk to your manager because you're getting fired. Ma'am, I'll be more than happy to call a supervisor. However, about breaking your property, we have video evidence. I did no such thing. The entitled mom keeps going off. I can take it. The section is mostly empty, however, there's still a lot of passengers on the sidewalk, just watching the whole scenario. She then gets out of her vehicle and says something like, Well, since I've already been ticketed, I'm just going to go find my son. The ticket she was given was for airport signs and markings. There's a different code for an unattended vehicle. Me being the cold-hearted dick I am let her walk away. Gave it a minute, wrote her another ticket, and called for a tow truck to take it away. The entitled mom comes right when the tow truck starts backing up to lift her front wheels. What the f*** are you doing? said the entitled mom. Unattended vehicles must be towed away, I told her. See son, I told you he was discriminating me and targeting me only because I am a woman. You need to do something. Sir, how long has my mom been parked here? asked the son. I'd say about 40 minutes. Mom, you know that's way too long. The son shakes his head and before his mom can start to say something, he says loudly, Let's cut our losses right now and leave, before it gets towed all the way away. If a vehicle is towed, it is an additional $50, but even if the tow truck touches the vehicle, it's $25 to the driver of the tow truck. The son comes over to me while his mom gets in the passenger seat. I'm sorry for what she said to you, said the son. If anyone apologizes to me, I call it good. 
I tell him it's whatever, and then he thanks me for being patient. Because he is being so nice, I decide to teach his mom a lesson. Because you're being very polite and reasonable, I'll waive the $25 towing fee, I said. Thanks, I really appreciate that. I'll be getting out of here right now. He then turns to the whole crowd. I am sorry for how my mother behaved and acted. If she offended anyone, I am so sorry. I take it he wanted to teach her a lesson too. I figure, let's add on to it. Sir, because people like you make my job easy, fun, and nice, I'll also void the second ticket. I grab it and walk away. Edit. I am trained in customer service, which is odd for a government entity, right? Well, anyway, I figured with this scenario, I could actually teach everyone a lesson. If you're a reasonable person and apologize or act responsibly, you won't get a ticket, or you can have one voided. My boss has said several times that tickets aren't a tool. They're the last resort of our enforcement. My goal is not to try and make the airport more money. It's to give people a good experience with their travels. So in saying that the son was apologetic, I wanted to reward him, and hopefully make everyone leave with a little hearted feeling that if I'm good to these people, they'll be good to me. HOA vandalizes father's truck, gets immediate justice. This happened a few years back. Our homeowners association has always been known to be sneaky and to flat out give false accusations on homeowners. Especially in this day with security cameras, we can easily spot out who the investigators are. Most recently, a homeowner was told she was supposed to get approval before she started reshingling her roof. The thing is, her roof hasn't been reshingled in 10 years, and she had no plans to do it. Things like that. Call it just a mistake, call it malicious. Well, a few years ago, we had our time to shine. It was a simple morning. I was still temporarily living with my father at the time. Well, one morning we decided to go out to get groceries, when we found that his pickup truck had been smashed into. Nothing was taken, it was just smashed into. Cops arrive. They do some investigating and found that a rock inside the truck was from a house down the street. Unfortunately, they couldn't get them to admit to the crime, nor could they prove it was even them. Understandable, criminals will grab things that they find, but it was suspicious. The rock, I should say, was a special kind of rock that no one else in the neighborhood had. Some round polish type. Very unique. After this incident, I installed a security camera on his house. Well, not two days later, we got an HOA violation for a vehicle eyesore that needs to be removed. Just two days later. I'm confused how such a letter could have been written up so fast, but I started to suspect foul play. One day we were home and had a knock at the door. The HOA had actually called a code inspection officer. The week hadn't even been over yet, so the parts to fix the truck weren't delivered yet. We weren't paying expedited shipping for damages we didn't cause, and the truck was so old insurance would probably just total it. The truck is sentimental to him, so he wasn't going to get rid of it. It still ran great. Code inspection tells my father that vehicles which do not run need to be removed. They both stop talking and take a second, and both almost say at the same time, don't I know you? Turns out the code inspection officer went to the same church as my father and knew each other. The officer tells my father if he can show the truck starts, he is going to write it up as being in code. My father starts the truck just fine as the engine isn't damaged. He tells him to go on with his day and to have a good one. At this point we are furious because we started to suspect the HOA may have did this as there's no way they could have possibly known so fast. Unfortunately, our turn of the street had no neighbors with security cameras until I installed one on our house, so it caught nothing specific to our incident. Down the street, these people supposedly broke into a car as well, but the camera on their house was unable to see anything. Damn. Here's where the fun begins. Fast forward a couple months after nothing happened, I decided to install a new dash cam in my car. I found a good one that uses very little power off the battery and can activate if there's any bumps to the car. Even if the car is off, it just needs to be wired straight to the battery for this. It's a thinkware. A few days later, we got a violation notice for our mailbox being crooked. It wasn't crooked much, but I do remember it having an angle. Odd. I could just fix it, but my car was aiming straight at the mailbox. I'm thinking, no, this couldn't be possible. It only records if there's a bump. I take out the memory card, and apparently I didn't configure it correctly. It was recording the whole time. It never went into sleep mode. I watched as the investigator walks up to the mailbox and pushes it crooked. 
then writes down on his tablet his findings and takes a picture for the records. I'm appalled at what I see. I have the proof I needed. They wanted us to come to the board meeting and present what is going on at our address. We haven't told them yet that we have the pictures, but to summarize real fast how our HOA works, the board hires an outside company to do the grunt work. Let's call it Bentry Management. We go to the meeting and sit down. Bentry Management was the one in control of our account, and I swear to you, she looked like a Karen, so the name fits for her. As time goes by in the meeting, we get to discuss what is happening at her house. We present the timelines and tell them about the truck being smashed, and just two days later, we get a letter. We ask what dates the investigator was out for that time. Karen refuses to answer it. She argues, ignorantly, that we should keep better care of our stuff, as if it was our fault. Then comes the mailbox incident. We tell her that we have reasons to believe that the investigator is the one that is causing damages to our property and is harassing us. Karen denies this and says that is impossible and that she knows him personally. Oh, is that so? I ask. She says, yes, why? I then pull out my laptop out of my book bag that I had been hiding, open it up to the video file already loaded, and show it to the entire board. Enter Exhibit A. I said out loud and played the video. Karen's face is bright red. She says that is not her investigator. I then also pulled out the letter about the mailbox, which was complete with date. It matches the cooked-on timestamp on the video. She still tries to claim it's not them. No, it's a coincidence. I'm sorry, but you have a vandal and it's not us. It's not? Hmm. I let the video play, knowing she's falling into a pit hard right now. As the man walks towards my car, you can plain as day see, Bentry management on his shirt. She's no longer red now. She's white as a ghost. The board looks over at her and asks what she has to say about this. Karen is silent and has nothing except a few noises, which I assume was her brain trying to comprehend what just happened. I then proceed to bring up a previous case, which I happen to remember before we left for the meeting, where we had a grass violation beside our house. Now this area they were claiming was actually not visible from the sidewalk due to the house's shape. I asked point blank, has at any time your investigators walked on our property, illegally trespassing? Knowing as per their rules, they aren't allowed to do that. Karen is visibly shaking now and mutters out, no, of course not, with her head down, unable to maintain eye contact with me. She probably feels that I have more evidence, but unfortunately I didn't. So I ask again. She asks why. Our neighbor, whom are lawyers, literally next door to us where the side of this wall was, stands up and says, actually, that's not true. I have witnessed one of your investigators go between our houses and poke around the trash bins. Bingo. I didn't even realize she had this information. I couldn't have asked for better timing. Karen at this point just starts arguing with our neighbors about no proof. The board proceeds to apologize for the incident and they were going to discuss what is going to happen in the future about this. At that point, the meeting is over. A month passes and we get a letter that a new person will be in charge for Bentry management and new investigators. She was fired that night. Since she was fired, my father tells me we only get the occasional blip of errors, but they correct it immediately and don't bother us really anymore. Alright guys, and that's going to be all for today. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So take care and I'll see you next time.